And even in this conversation so far, several times this expression has come up of not being good enough. Now, you felt this for most of your life. Um, you've suggested some of it was inherited from your mother and seeing her, but also crucially, and it's a key part of the book, is your relationship with your father, Henry Fonda. He was responsible for, it seems to me, a lot of that feeling of not being good enough, of not being good enough for How him. How many of you saw on Golden Pond? A lot of you. Look at that. Well, you know that, that, that relationship between Norman and Chelsea, my father and me, very similar to what, what was real in, in, in real life. And at one point, you know, Chelsea says to her mother, you know, I'm, when, I'm, when I'm in California, you know, I have my own business and I take charge and I can do. And when I come back here with him, I'm just a little fat girl. Could have been my words. You know, my father always let me know he thought I was fat. And, um, it had kind of a, an obsession with being thin, and, uh, and I just couldn't get him to love me. So, you know, I, I said, I'm not good enough. I'm just not, I'm not good enough. I have to be perfect. And what happens when you try to be perfect, which, of course, we're not supposed to be. God is perfect. We're, we're supposed to be complete. <laughs> and w when, you, when you think you need to be perfect, you become disembodied especially girls, and it happens, Carol Gilligan, I just saw her sitting right here. I learned from Professor Carol Gilligan, the great feminist psychologist, American, um, who had such an effect on my life, that it, it happens when girls hit puberty, because that's when womanhood lo looms, and you're supposed to then, you know, fit in and be popular and, and be feminine, and if you feel that you're not good enough or you're too fat or, the not good enough usually attaches itself to our bodies. And, and as a child, then, as, a, as an adolescent, you, you kind of move out of yourself, because who wants to inhabit something so imperfect? Even if it is, I mean, who cares if you're, per but it doesn't matter what's real. What matters is how you feel. So you become, you sort of take up residence next door. <laughs> and, and that can continue through your life into your relationships. You know, you, you come into the home of your relationship, but you only bring that which is as close to perfect as, as you can, and you leave the rest of you on the sidewalk, and, uh, which means you, know, you can't really have a real relationship, although you don't know it, because you've never had one. You don't know what you're missing unless you've smelt it, at least. And the, wh one of the things that he imposed all his life was the importance of not showing emotion, of not breaking down. Oh, yeah. Now, there's I mean, several stories that make you gasp reading this book. One of them is the, the only time that you ever saw Henry Fonda cry. Yeah, I was a little girl. I guess I was four or five, and it was the day that Roosevelt died. And my father was in the garden. He was a gardener, and he was sobbing, leaning up against his hoe and sobbing. And he didn't know I was watching him hiding because I was so small. It was the only time until the very end, yeah.